the annual Catholic Appeal. 60 years of changing lives in Western Massachusetts. Sharing, teaching, reaching. Respecting the dignity of life at all ages. Our Catholic mission calls us to be Christ in our world right now. Please donate to the annual Catholic Appeal today and help us put faith in action. Coming up on this edition of Real to Real, the Diocese of Springfield hosts New England's Catholic school superintendents as they gather to share ways to improve Catholic education. I'm Steve Kiltonic on the UMass campus where the Newman Center hosted a group of seminarians on a two-day evangelization mission. And Dan Dumas has the latest news on the Diocese of Springfield. These stories and more are just ahead on this edition of Real to Real. Hello and welcome to Real to Real on this final weekend of March. Earlier this month, the Newman Catholic Center and its director, Father Gary Daly, welcomed some newcomers to UMass Amherst campus. A group of seminarians from Maryland traveled north to spend several days at the university. Their purpose was to evangelize and proclaim the good news to as many students as possible. Steve Kiltonic spent the day with the energetic seminarians and has this report. From March 3rd to the 5th, a large contingent of men in black collars could be seen crisscrossing the University of Massachusetts Amherst campus. These 27 seminarians from Mount St. Mary's Seminary in Maryland spent three days on an evangelization mission, interacting with UMass students and proclaiming the gospel of Christ. Using the Newman Catholic Center as their home base, they focused their efforts primarily in the school's dining halls and academic buildings. This was the seminarian's first trip to UMass, but these evangelization missions have been going on for the past nine years at various college campuses. The missions were started in 2010 by seminarian at Mount St. Mary's, Thomas Cavanaugh, seen here in a baseball cap. He felt called to evangelize and teamed up with his professor to organize a new evangelization club. The club and the mission trips became very successful, and the duo ended up writing a book on campus evangelization called How to Win Friends for Christ, One Conversation at a Time. Father Gary Daly said the seminarian's visit to UMass was really by default. This group of seminarians was supposed to go to another campus and the campus pulled out. And, and so Jim, who was uh, coordinating this whole event, uh, got a hold of one of our focus missionaries and put him in touch with me. Jim is Jim Bors, the seminarian who orchestrated the logistics of the trip with the Newman Center staff and focus missionaries. He told me about the program and I said, hey listen, if it's going to be more boots on the ground to evangelize students here at the University of Massachusetts, then how can I say no to that? The seminary conducts mission trips twice a year, mainly to non-Catholic colleges. This is their 18th overall trip. They were at the University of Pittsburgh last fall. Most of them are in the Middle Atlantic region, but we've gone as far south as the University of Florida, and we've gone out to the Midwest, um, this time up here at at Amherst, we're uh, in the farthest northeast that we've gone. Seminarians are required to make at least one trip during their six years in the seminary. Most of the seminarians that go on a trip get so much out of it and it's so rewarding that they, they often come back. Some, some seminarians are on almost every trip that the, that's available. On campus, the seminarians are usually paired together or with a member of the Newman Center ministry team or focus missionary. Our mission is really to fulfill the Great Commission that Jesus gave his disciples to go and teach the nations everything that, that he has taught them. The approach, according to Boers, is low-key but effective. We politely and cordially invite our to ask if we can uh, sit down and chat with them, and so we do. And the, uh, the impact on the students is amazing. Boers witnessed a number of conversions over the years. Even when there's not a conversion per se, many, many seeds are planted. Many students are very happy and glad to have talked with us. Mount St. Mary's works with the Focus Missionary Teams and the Newman Campus Ministry. We're transitioning this from an event that is supporting seminarians uh, to we want this to be an event where this is a Catholic campus ministry event that the seminarians support. So that when we leave, there's 
a lot of follow-up activity that's already in place. Before going on any trip, the seminarians attend four training sessions. They learn the importance of prayer, how to share the New Testament to proclaim the Word of Christ, the importance of their own personal testimony, and are given suggested approaches to use in the sharing process. After arriving on Sunday night, a campus ministry faith sharing and pizza dinner was held at Newman. The seminarians challenged students to evangelize their classmates, teammates, or doormates by signing a three-in-one pledge agreement. Each committed to share their faith with at least three people during Lent by asking them to Mass or a ministry event. Before heading out for the day, the seminarians attended morning Mass. After breakfast, each spent an hour in prayer during the Holy Hour and Eucharistic Adoration. At 9 a.m., the seminarians left to engage students in the dorms, dining halls, lounge areas, and academic buildings. An information table was set up by the Newman Student Association in one of the dining halls. This is the second trip for Jacob Martini. I've just always enjoyed talking to people. I'd say the first time going out there, I was kind of nervous. The more you go out, the more you just go for it. And especially this trip, I felt like a veteran. I kind of knew my stuff a little bit better. Martini has a bachelor's in mechanical engineering and was able to easily relate to students. I was helping someone on their stats homework and their physics homework right in front of me while having this conversation about God. Jacob engaged with at least 30 people during the two days. That morning, he spoke to a fallen away Catholic. He promised, actually made the commitment to go to Mass tomorrow for Ash Wednesday like he used to and to attend more of the Masses here at the Newman Center. To know he impacted someone's spiritual life was gratifying. For me, it's very humbling. I'd love to be the one that walks them step by step to Christ. Like, yeah, let's, let's go. Like, let's just keep on going. But I know I like to run, and some people just need to walk. Esteban Maillard is one of the more experienced seminarians. This is his seventh trip. The first day of evangelizing was probably the hardest day that like, I ever had on any of these trips. A lot of people were. I felt very cold, not kind of looking down, not wanting to engage or anything like that. But the second day was a total 180. A lot of really good conversations, and uh, it was just a huge blessing. Mayar, who was paired with a focus missionary, employs the Socratic technique, asking students lots of questions to find out how involved they are in their faith. He met an Irish Catholic girl who was no longer practicing. After telling her that Jesus truly loves her, he pulled out a Divine Mercy card. I asked her to look at the right hand of Jesus held up in blessing. And, um, and I said, think about all the times that somebody has like raised their hand to, to hit you or have been angry with you or have just, you know, treated you wrongly. I want you to replace that with Jesus' hand blessing you. Giant tears just started welling up in her eyes. It started falling down her face. I think to her, I think she remembered that, wow, Jesus, does love me. So it was, a, it was a beautiful experience. Sean O'Connor was also on his second trip. One hour long discussion was with a Chinese American student who never even heard about Christ. When we walked up to him today, he was actually really happy that people just wanted to talk to him and share good news. Whether or not at the end of that hour they say, I'm a Christian, I believe in Christ, that's not the main issue. The issue is, will they continue to grow in their faith because everything's a journey. The culmination of the two-day evangelization mission was the final evening event called Find What You're Looking For. Students active in campus ministry shared their testimonies of how their lives have been changed by Jesus Christ. The students and a seminarian led three breakout sessions focusing on the existence of God, who is Jesus, and why the Catholic Church. Everyone came back to the CAF to attend a festive Mardi Gras party put on by Father Daly, where everyone got a chance to eat some great wings and relax. Father Daly said the fruit of the seminarian's labor was already apparent even before they left. I've already made appointment with a student who uh, wants to become Catholic. I already had made an appointment with a student who wants to come to confession, who's been away from the church uh, for a while. And that's all a result of the seminarian's uh, visit here. The seminarians left the next day tired, but knowing their trip was a success for everyone involved. The Newman Center Campus Ministry, the Focus Missionaries, the students, and the seminarians themselves who answered the call to evangelize. For Real to Real, I'm Steve Kiltonic.
The seminarian's trip went so well that Father Daly is not ruling out a return trip by Mount St. Mary to UMass at some point. He says that while their time in Amherst was short, their impact on the campus Catholic community is long-lasting. And the Newman Center is one of several agencies, ministries, and services funded in part by the annual Catholic Appeal. And joining me now is Kathy Harrington, coordinator of the annual Catholic Appeal. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Sharon. Thanks for having me. So, Kathy, how do agencies like the Newman Center receive funding from the ACA? Well, any agency or ministry within the Diocese of Springfield can be eligible for a grant from the annual Catholic Appeal. They begin the process by notifying me and I send them an application. They must show to us their adherence to Catholic values. And once all the applications are received, the Allocation Board considers all applicants and reviews them and uh, determines whether or not an agency or ministry will receive a grant. Now, the ACA is currently marking its 60th year of providing funding for many organizations in Western Massachusetts. So why is it so important to support the annual Catholic Appeal? Well, as Catholics, we are called to put our faith into action. And there is no better way than by supporting the annual Catholic Appeal through the many agencies and ministries that service families who are in need, that service women who are in crisis facing a pregnancy that was not expected and confused about what to do. Or if it's taking food to the homebound through the Take and Eat program, all of those actually put our Catholic faith in action and become the face of the Catholic Church. And in this climate, there is no better way to show the world who we are as Catholics than by supporting the annual Catholic Appeal and supporting all of these ministries. Through one small donation, your contributions combine together and create a big pool of support for our neighbors who are in need and become the face of the Catholic Church through the annual Catholic Appeal. Uh -huh. Now, how are people able to donate? Well, there are several ways. You may have received a pledge card in the mail, um, a letter from the bishop or a letter from your pastor. Certainly you can fill that out and mail that back in. Or you could drop it in the collection basket at church. Um, at your church you will find a pledge envelope. You could fill that out while you're at Mass and pop that into your collection basket as well. If you choose, um, you can donate online by going to diospringfield.org. On our homepage, there is an annual Catholic Appeal uh, logo. You would click on that. It takes you to the annual Catholic Appeal webpage. And from there, you would enter into a secure website to make your contribution online. If you need help with that, please call me at 413-452-0670, and I'd be happy to help you out. It's always a delight to talk to our uh, contributors, so please feel free to give me a call. All right, Kathy Harrington, thank you so much, and good luck with this year's campaign. Thank you, Sharon. And still to come on Real to Real, Dan Dumas has the latest news from the Diocese of Springfield, and New England's Catholic school superintendents meet in Springfield to share ideas on how to improve Catholic education. These stories and more are all still to come on Real to Real. The Chapels of Salvation, your weekly spiritual connection. I'm Passionist Brother Terrence Scanlon. Your Chapel Souls inviting you to take time out of your busy day and join us Sunday morning. Father Mark Mingo will help us celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent as we welcome students from St. Michael's Academy as our special guests. The Chapels of Salvation, your spiritual connection, Sunday mornings at 10 on 22 News WWLP and coming up next on Albany's Fox 23 WXXA. The Annual Catholic Appeal. 60 years of changing lives in Western Massachusetts. Sharing, teaching, reaching. Respecting the dignity of life at all ages. Our Catholic mission calls us to be Christ in our world right now. Please donate to the annual Catholic Appeal today and help us put faith in action. I'm Dan Dumas with your Real to Real News Briefs. 
Being appointed to any of the military academies is a prestigious honor granted to a select few, and a Pope Francis Preparatory School graduate recently joined the ranks of the Long Gray Line. Steve Kiltonic reports. On March 22nd, a 2018 graduate of Pope Francis Preparatory School became the latest appointee to the United States Military Academy at West Point. Congratulations from the United States of America. Connor Kojal was presented with the official Academy appointment by U.S. Congressman Richard E. Neal in a brief ceremony before faculty, staff, students, as well as Connor's immediate family. I'm honored to be appointed to the United States Military Academy at West Point. It's been a goal of mine for quite a while to serve um, as an officer in the United States Army. Kojal is currently a freshman at Clarkson University, where he's majoring in engineering and belongs to the Reserve Officers Training Corps, or ROTC. Kojal, from Westfield, applied to West Point after graduating last year, but was not accepted. I was definitely disappointed at the first time, but um, I knew, I knew um, once I got to college, I wasn't sure exactly if I should reapply because, you know, in college, like, you have so many things going on. But after getting to, uh, to Clarkson, where I was before, um, it's definitely something I knew I wanted to pursue, and West Point was the place that, where I wanted to be. I think the fact that he stayed with it is even the better part of the story. I, I think that it's a reminder in life that we are all, in a sense, uh, committed to that idea that, like Sisyphus, we always have to continue to roll the boulder back up the hill. And I think that when you consider the uh, national competition for a very limited number of seats at the United States Military Academies, uh, this is really the cream of the crop. Prior to the selection process, Kojal visited the U.S. Air Force and Naval Academies before making a decision. I was actually inspired by uh, one of the kids in high school who was applying when I was uh, a freshman. That was Cam Griffin. Attending the ceremony was Kojal's parents, Jeff and Kristen Kojal, his brother Tanner, a student at Pope Francis, and Kojal's grandfather, John Kojal. Must yeah. be pretty proud of him. Proud and, and just, well, pr proud more of his determination uh, to mm -hmm. come back and... And uh, it w obviously, it's something he really wanted. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the year, he's, he's had a good year up at school, but I think it's, you know, helped guide him to where he really wants to be. On occasions like this, we're also reminded that these are amongst the best young people in America. And when you meet them during the interviewing process, and then eventually when you meet them through the selection process, uh, you're reminded of how uh, great the future of America is going to be. Kojal reports to West Point July 1st for seven weeks of basic training before starting classes at the end of August as a first-year plebe, joining the ranks of the Long Gray Line. In Springfield, this is Steve Kiltonic. Ninety-five fourth through eighth grade scholars from six surrounding Catholic schools competed in the 13th annual St. Mary's Academy Spelling Bee in Longmeadow earlier this month. Dave Martin attended and has this report. Glorious. Glorious. G-O-O-R-I-O-U-S, Glorious. Glorious, correct. Glorious. Students and family members cheered on their schools while enjoying some friendly competition with other Catholic schools from the region. They were St. Thomas the Apostle in West Springfield, Blessed Sacrament in Mater Della Rosa in Holyoke, St. Michael's Academy in Springfield, St. Stanislaus in Chicopee, along with the host school, St. Mary's Academy. Jenna Benitez, development director at St. Mary's Academy said the spelling bee was all about students learning and having fun at the same time. The lights go down, they get up to the microphone and you can hear a pin drop. So it's pretty exciting to watch your own student, um, you know, get up there and actually have the confidence to participate. So it's exciting. And then if they get through to the next round, it's even more exciting. So, but even though there may be some, you know, disappointments, it's really all the kids that participate are winning because it just takes a lot. Can you say the definition, please? The definition is a person who was in someone's family in past times. An ancestor. Ancestor. A-N-C-E-S-T-O-R. Ancestor. Ancestor, correct. Benitez's son and daughter, like all St. Mary Academy students competing, were prepared to ask the pronouncer various questions. These are important because some words which sound the same are spelled differently depending on how they are used in a sentence. Jack Day, an eighth grader from St. Thomas the Apostle School, was competing for the fifth time. He practiced writing the words out on his hand because it helps him concentrate on the spelling this way. Day enjoyed being coached by the faculty at his school. Um, it kind of just like makes the teachers and the kids like out of the classroom kind of like bond together and like 
kind of work together to, for, for like a common goal. A favorite. Favorite. F A V O R I T E. Jack's younger brother Michael, a fifth grader at St. Thomas, practiced spelling words with fellow students during lunch recess. So it's my first year. Happy I'm able to go up there and be able to um, be with my classmates and represent the school. Both Dave brothers were eliminated in the third round. The second prize of $500 went to Samuel Escander from St. Mary's Academy, while the first place winner of $1,000 was Julia Fettis, a seventh grader from the St. Stanislaus School. In Longmeadow, I'm David Martin. Finally, trying to get families to church, and better yet, to stay in church, has been a challenge for decades. But recently, a conference was held in the Diocese of Springfield for religious educators to help them encourage families in their parishes to stay connected to the sacraments. Carolee McGrath has more. Catechists in the Diocese of Springfield gathered at St. Elizabeth Parish in Ludlow for a workshop on connecting families to sacramental ministries. Tom East is the director of the Center for Ministry Development, which is based in Washington State. Today we're talking about how to connect families with the sacramental ministries for children and youth. And so we're looking at um, baptism, first reconciliation, first communion, confirmation, and those children and youth who are involved in initiation ministries. East says one of the challenges all parishes face is getting families to church and keeping them there. One of the things we recognize is that when families come to us for sacrament, especially baptism, that they're taking, uh, the bishop who's on our board, he said, they're taking two steps toward us at the same time that lots of families are walking away. So how can we, you know, really take that moment that they're taking one step towards faith and they're taking a step towards our parish, and how can we seize that opportunity to really build a relationship? He says one way is to get families involved in the ministry and mission of the church. And sometimes I've heard catechetical leaders say, well, I just don't even know why they want to come to a sacrament because they're not practicing the faith. But I think at the deepest roots, we know that grace calls. And so that there's some reason there's a, the grandmother in the distance that's saying, hey, you should do this. But that's part of the way that grace is calling them back to the table. Gina Chervinsky is the director of youth and young adult ministry for the Diocese of Springfield. For us as a diocese, we really need to start focusing more on ministry with families. It's one of the questions when we go around and do our parish visitations that parishes ask, how can we engage our families better? You know, what, what do we need to be doing? They're, they're not coming to mass on Sunday or they're, they're not bringing their kids to our faith formation programs. What do we need to do? So uh, that was one of my thoughts in bringing this workshop to our diocese. Chervinsky says once families come and see the joy in other people, they wanna learn more. They see their kids are having that good time they might want to go deeper or, or learn more, grow further, and then they kind of understand a little bit more about, aha, that's what this is about. That's This Jesus thing makes a little bit more sense. Participants were also able to view different books from vendors to enhance their faith formation programs. Reporting for Real to Real, I'm Carolee McGrath. And remember, you can always stay informed on all the latest news in the Catholic Church locally and beyond by logging on to iobserve.org. There you can read articles written by our Catholic communication staff, as well as view archived episodes of Real to Real. That's iobserve.org. I'm Dan Dumas, and those are your Real to Real news briefs. Well, twice a year, superintendents from across New England meet to share ideas with the goal of improving Catholic education. The most recent meeting was held in Springfield. Nick Morganelli caught up with our new diocesan superintendent, Daniel Belargent, and has the story. Let's pray together, in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Springfield is one of 11 diocesan education offices that govern Catholic schools all across the six New England states. Their meeting location was held right here in the city of Holmes. We all have common challenges. And one of the things we talked about yesterday was enrollment, of course. It's always uppermost on our mind. And uh, how we include 
the increasing Latino population. What are our schools doing to ensure a welcoming community environment? So we all got chatty about that and shared what our schools were doing. And you know, that's so valuable because invariably you hear something that, oh, we haven't tried that yet, but I think we, we could. Providence College launched a program in 2001 called PACT, Providence Alliance for Catholic Teachers. Unique in teacher education, it invites recent graduates to contribute two years of service as teachers in Catholic schools in New England. They made a presentation to the superintendents on their future plans. The reason Dr. O'Connor was here today is because uh, his program and Providence College is looking to expand uh, how they can partner with Catholic education throughout New England. We're very concerned about the students in our urban Catholic schools. Uh, they come in oftentimes with an educational deficiency, um, often usually in the, in, the, in the reading area um, and language arts. If we can create some programs where we're working together to really help our inner city students um, bring up their achievement, uh, that's a good thing. I love PAC teachers. I really do. I love their energy. I love their enthusiasm. But most of all, I love the fact that they really understand what's at the heart of Catholic schools, which is community. It really is. Com Catholic schools are not just, um, you know, factories for education, but they're, they're part of the church, and every Catholic school is a, is a community with Jesus Christ at the center of that community. The two-day conference dealt with many topics, including financial sustainability and declining enrollment. But the main purpose for the semi-annual meeting is to always learn from one another and improve our Catholic schools. Superintendent Balarjan explains. So to be with a group of really committed, mission-driven leaders around the table who are asking the same questions and then all being able to sit in, in the room and think about the solutions together. How do small schools work? What are we doing to govern those small schools? Uh, what does a curriculum look like? How can we develop and design a curriculum that can really maximize um, what our students are learning. How can we create more rigor by by reimagining what our Catholic schools look like in certain areas? To navigate those questions together provides this uh, this sense of community. To be Springfield situated in New England, who's all asking the same questions, that's where the best decisions are going to be made. And those de decisions will directly impact us in, in Western Mass because we know what's working. Another presentation was given by NEAC, the New England Association of Schools and Colleges. Many of our dioceses, they accredit all of our schools. And, and there's a couple dioceses where they accredit about half of the schools. NEASC is also a school improvement process. It's not just a once and done kind of thing. You got the seal of approval, you're a great school. Um, it's not like that. It's, so it's a continuous improvement process. It's very important that we work closely with NEASC. You know, we want to work with other professional organizations, again, to ensure that we're staying true to mission and, you know, have the highest quality schools here in New England so we can continue to serve um, the children, all God's children with a great Catholic education. For Real to Real, I'm Nick Morganelli. And the next superintendent's meeting will involve discussions on STEM education and take place in October. And for this week, that's Real to Real. Just a reminder that next Sunday, April 7th, the Diocese of Springfield will hold two abuse crisis healing prayer services simultaneously at 2 p.m. at St. Michael's Cathedral in Springfield and at St. Joseph's Church in Pittsfield. These are part of the ongoing diocesan response to the abuse crisis. All are encouraged to take part in one of these two services as a way to show prayerful support to abuse victims, survivors, and their families. Again, that's next Sunday, April 7th, starting at 2 p.m. Remember, for updates anytime, head over to our news and information site, iobserve.org, where you will find the latest news on the Catholic faith, locally, nationally, and across the globe. That's iobserve.org. We also update our Facebook page daily with news of what our reporters are working on, so check that out and like us at Catholic Communications. And I will see you next week at this same time for another edition of Real to Real, your window on the world around you. Have a great week. Real to Real is a production of the Catholic Communications Corporation, funded in part by the annual Catholic Appeal, and the support of you, our faithful viewers.